So we don't just have fires. We have fires literally everywhere. <laughs> oh no! Hello and welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And today I want to fix this little industrial district on the outskirts of the city. We're getting lots of errors stating that there are not enough workers in this entire district. It's plaguing all of it. And this really comes back to not having enough residential areas zoned um, or having workers that are overly educated. So there's a couple ways that I could go about fixing this. Number one, I could go in, look at the policies, and uh, just uh, add the Industry 4.0 policy, and this area will now become a haven for educated workers to come and work. And that would likely solve the problems. I could add some more dense housing in the downtown area and be good to go. I really don't like that idea. I don't want this area to become, uh, you know, Disneyland, seaside, you know, whatever. I want this to feel like a real place. And a real place has areas that support people of all income levels to live and, and thrive in the community. So today, we are going to do a couple of things. So first, I, well, well not first, one of the things that we're going to do is develop a moderate income neighborhood. And we're going to do that in this area on the opposite side of the highway of this area so that uh, the distance to get to work is relatively, relatively short. But once we do that, this area is going to be completely uh, fixed. And now we're going to have lots of traffic coming from this area because it'll get as dense as it's supposed to. So we're also going to build another road out of this area and a couple of interchanges. So you might wonder why I'm doing this. Well, let's take a step back and look at the community. So we have a lot of north-south connectivity through here on local roads and in our collector and arterial network. Uh, but when we're looking at east-west connectivity, we really have, we have river, which stops at this park, goes up, becomes river and ocean. We have uh, the highway, um, and then we have Semper Verde, which winds all the way through the community. So it's not really great. And even Semper Verde merges into uh, Keller House with the, the interstate, and all of that traffic is being funneled right there. Or it's being funneled down here. So there's this is a big barrier. Uh, it's it's a great amenity for the community, having a zoo and a, a nature preserve like that, but it's a barrier. So we need to add another east-west connection. So I think what we're going to do is add a connection from this area, have a park low right here, work our way across, have a park low, and then come behind all of this development and meet up over here um, right in our downtown core and it'll it'll be a nice connection to, to Sunset Boulevard which I think is going to be a really big benefit to the downtown area because those uh, industrial goods that it needs will be easy to get so lots of work today let's get right to it so the first place that we're going to start is is actually with the park lows so I think it's this is going to be probably the biggest challenge of the entire episode. So what we're going to do, first I want to take this down to uh, one. So when I'm building these, I want the angle and really nothing else. So I'm going to pop this up three and get this as close to the road as I can. And the reason why I like to have everything off is it gives me a lot of control to put this this other pillar exactly where I want it. And I want this to be as even with the highway as it can be. Now I'm going to turn road length back on because I have an opportunity here with the road length. And that is if I hit 12 tiles over, it's a perfect slope. Now over here, I'm going to do something a little different. So let's take a look at the topography. So first of all, I want to do a little bit of grading. So as I look at the topography here, I notice that there's a hill over here, which is going to make it fairly easy for me to continue this bridge over and whoops, 
dig a big hole. <laughs> so what, what I actually want to do is continue this road at the level of this embankment because I don't want to cross this rail corridor if I can at all avoid it. So the goal is going to be to cross this corridor and then immediately swing to the side of the map over here. So swinging to the side of the map will allow me to get around all of this existing developments. It's going to be a tr it's going to be a trick. So as I look at where I am placing my bridge for this park though, I'm a little concerned that I'm going to deal with topography. So I'm going to take a step back and move this even closer to the exterior of the community. So there's a delicate dance here that I'm playing. I don't want to get so close to the community that I, or so close to the border that I bump up against it and can't make a roadway connection. But at the same time, I do really want to uh, be able to. I do. I do really want to be able to to, to not have to do a bunch of grading to make this work. So I'm going to probably restore this embankment after the fact, but for now this will work well. So now I'm going to do a couple of tricks here. So I like to do all of this work with gravel roads. To me, it just feels a little more natural. I'm going to bring this up five tiles and now I need to swing this around six. So I'm going to use my curved road tool. Now, one thing I like to do just so I'm making sure that I'm measuring the way I want to is I'll actually sometimes make a guide road. And now I know this is four, five, six. So that's one side of my of my uh, of my park low. The other side will be over here. So I know I went up four over here. I'm gonna take that a step down here. And now I'm again making a guide, which, you know, might be controversial, but to, for me, it works out really, really well. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is mirror this, this road on either side, and I think it's completely straight right there with this road. So now I've, I'm gonna pause this because I'm gonna do some work on the highway. I want to take that down. I think it's a little easier to work with this when it's all the same type of road. So I want one leg that's going to swoop, kind of sw uh, swoop back around and allow people to get into uh, uh, or onto this this road that I'm creating, and another that's going to take people from this road and allow them to get to the highway. And then I want to do the exact same thing over here. Now this leg is going to be a little bit longer because of the distance uh, that we are. Oh, I don't like what it did there. Kind of straightened everything out. Um, so I'm going to rebuild that because I do really want that to, to have a curvature to it. So real quick, Parklow, it's a little off offset. The, the main reason for that is that the, the highway is curving. I could spend a bunch of time to fix that I don't know that it's worthwhile. I don't think it's going to look all that bad and it's going to function appropriately and ultimately functions what I care about more than anything else. And my concern is that if I keep playing with this, the function's going to break. <laughs> so, whoops, I want to make sure that this is a bi directional road. So now you can see that this road will carry traffic both to the highway and away from it. And our junction looks correct there. I don't love that this is offset, but everything looks so good. Other than that, uh, what I could have, could have probably done to fix that would be to extend this another tile or two. I've got to do it. <laughs> you guys know who I am, and I can't leave it like this. This will bug me forever.
Okay, so what I was doing there was making a guide that should get me to where I need to be. So I think that that guide is going to put me right in the center of, uh, of where I need to be. So I have been letting perfect be the enemy of good. I'm going to take a step back. This was fine. I think I actually might have made this a little bit worse by going crazy on it. It's certainly not better, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Maybe, maybe, maybe slightly. Yeah, it's, it's identical. It, it's probably a little bit worse. So uh, I'm sorry <laughs> for that. <laughs> I know better. So. Now that I have this here, I just want to get this over the highway and I want it to immediately hit the ground as soon as we get over there. Okay, maybe not immediately. <laughs> so this is pretty good though. I do want to check and see though. Can a train pass? I think it's going to be, it'll be close. Let's see. Oh, that's backwards. <laughs> oh yeah. We're good. I don't like that the lines are clipping, but you know, for vanilla, this is probably as good as it gets. That said, there's a weird bump here. We're kind of kind of heads up a notch. It's fine. I'm gonna take my own lesson and advice, and I'm gonna leave this be. So now I, I mentioned that I want to get this road along here. I'm hoping that I can get this along as close to the city boundary as possible without going out and in a straight line. Now I am going to run into a problem with this farm here. So this is a routine issue. Uh, farms being in places that aren't necessarily uh, conducive to roadway projects we will uh, assume that they're okay moving some of their fields. And uh, <laughs> no eminent domain needed. <laughs> Actually, that would be, so. That's, that's the most likely uh, thing that would happen here is the eminent domain would be used and they would be handsomely rewarded for the loss of their property. Ooh, so now we've hit the topography. So we're, we're going up at a pretty good clip here. So I want to turn. I was wondering when I was going to hit that. So now, rather than going up, I want to start following the topography. We're going to respect the topography and angle here. So this is going to be a, kind of a weird, steep area, but we'll figure it out. Uh, next, we're going to connect this collector road up. So technically, this road that I'm creating is an arterial. So I don't want to connect any local roads, if at all possible. So like this road right here, you, you could see it. You certainly see that in, in rural areas. I know that this is not going to be rural in the sense uh, that you might anticipate a place being rural. So I don't want to pretend that it is and, and uh, end up with a a whole bunch of issues with that uh, roadway connection. So what we're going through here, it's going to be important to continue to maintain our junctions appropriately. So I want to prioritize all movements on this new arterial. Very good. And now I want to do a bit of grading, soften the landscape a bit. Okay, so now I want to make my connection over to the park low and to preserve as much land as I can for development, I'm gonna swing this over as quickly as I can without completely destroying this area, or without completely destroying this, this uh, roadway connection. So I, do, I did want this to be a very uh, gentle, sweeping uh, series of turns, because this is a really high speed road. So 
uh, I know that this is going to need guardrails if it's too too uh, if, 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 if the the radius is too tight. Truthfully, it looks a little tight to me. Um, might want to check that out later. Okay, so back to this area. I do. There's a couple things I want to do. So first, I know that I want this connection to come here, and for this, I'm going to do a fairly straight road. There is some topography, but it's not anything insurmountable. And I think I'm just going to extend this road straight up and then cut across and head right up the hill. And the rationale for this really is that uh, we need a downtown connection. I think that having this uh, will provide a great deal of uh, freight benefit. So this is really a freight corridor. In the future, it could become a major a six lane arterial through here, uh, or a collector, depending on how much access we decide to give. Uh, but either way, I do, I wanna respect the topography, but I am going to bend it to my will a little bit too, because I wanna make sure that this road isn't too curvy, if at all possible. So I'm trying to maintain the same contour line, but when I'm making curves, they are gentle. And truthfully, I should probably start descending because I'm going up. And I see there's this basin here, and that's kind of where, yeah, that's where that road connection is coming. So. so I might make this sweeping movement. So I don't love how steep this area is there's a little bit of a hump there I'm going to give this one go at, uh, at fixing it see what that did looks the same I'm gonna leave it it's not any worse than these other ones so I'm gonna leave it all right so we can we can start moving the game at this point uh, we've got this connection made and I do kind of want to see what happens and see what kind of utilization we get here. So we're just going to convert that right now. And then I want to clean up some of these grades. Obviously, we wouldn't want this kind of a slope. Ooh, it's raining. So this is a suggestion that someone uh, provided me in the comments. They said, why not? Maybe the problem with Verde Beach and the fires is the lack of rain. Uh, so I said, you know what? I don't know that the game considers that but I'll give it a shot and uh, so far so far no fires <laughs> unless unless this is the usual where there's a fire going on I just don't notice it because I have been known to completely miss uh, out on a fire occurring <laughs> so what I like to do here is even the the road, uh, even the land next to the road with the road, pull it out a little ways, and then I like to feather it off the side. Use a bigger brush for that, and then you get a nice slope down rather than those sharp edges. And I think that if you were to pre grade a site like this, that's exactly what you'd expect to see. I guess it's not pre grading, it's grading a site. It's kind of like you don't unthaw something, you just thaw it. <laughs> but uh yeah so i think that that's that 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 would be what would be expected here okay it's not perfect but it's pretty darn good so i like this i do want to see if there are any other targeted connections that we can make i'd love to make a connection to this road right here Maybe not entirely necessary, but I have a feeling it would be well utilized. So I'm, as I survey the different connections that could be made, the one that makes the most sense to me would maybe be a connection right here over to uh, Everett Street. So I think we're going to make this a signalized connection and try to come up here and meet it at 90. There we go. Perfect. Let's look at our junctions. Signalize right here. Let's look at our roadway naming. 
So this is Max Harvey Drive. It's really a bypass at this point. Okay, Myrtle. Let's make sure Myrtle goes where it should. Okay, so that's much better. And let's see how our park low is working. Oh, looks good. And traffic, you know, it's carrying a lot of traffic, which is exactly what I expected to see. So interestingly, now uh, you see all the traffic's getting off here. I'm gonna speed this up. I wanna see if they utilize any more of the road now that we have another connection over here. You see some some use. Oh, look at that, now it's orange. So yeah, there, 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 was, uh, a, there was a reason to have another connection. So let's take this back to normal speeds. I do want to continue work. And one of the things I need to do is I, I want to clean up this. I, I did a little bit of grading before I realized that this probably wasn't the best approach in this area. So we should clean up this area, make sure that uh, any unnecessary uh, uh, cutting is, is filled. And, uh, you know, extra, extra soil is certainly a problem. So if you could add soils back into your project area, you're gonna do that. Especially if you've, if you've removed a lot. Okay, so we've got this, and boy, that rain is coming down. <laughs> but no fires yet, not a fire at all. So we're good, our forest is growing back. All right, I'll take that as a win. So the next park low is going to be considerably harder. Um, so part of the reason it's gonna be harder is we just don't really have a lot of space. Uh, let's look at our topography. Let's see how that, that part's better. So we're just gonna have to be really uh, cognizant of where we are starting and ending this thing because we could end up at a spot where we can't actually make our loops, uh, either because we're too close to this edge or because we're too close to this road, kind of a, a self-created harm there. So let's get this going. Same general design and layout as before. So we'll go up three. I will use a general road to start out with. So we have those normal pillars. I'm going to turn off everything except for angle so I can get this pillar as close to the highway as possible. And now the most important measurement, the road length, I want to get 12, I'm too close. So that's not gonna work. Need to try again. That's okay, that happens. Now we'll try for 12 again. Perf not perfect. Oh, shoot. I see a big problem. I can make my park low, but how do I get this road? Yeah, shoot. I got to be a little bit further down or make this just slightly smaller. Maybe I'll do that. So rather than going 12 out, which is the maximum... Uh, slope that you can do to have, kind of have that nice even slope. I'm going 10. It's still considerable and will still create some issues. So just want to make sure that I can make a connection. Who, boy, is that going to be tight? We can do it though. Maybe it's not beautiful, but it's it's all right. <laughs> see if I can make it beautiful. I really want this angle. I really care a lot about this angle in particular. So I really want this to line up well. That's perfect. So we can make this perfect. So we're going to go for it. We'll leave that there for now. This will be another highway. Unfortunately, this will never be upgraded to anything other than a local road until we uh, have this tile purchased, which is going to be a trick too which we'll get into that at another time. So same process as last time, gonna use dirt roads, gonna measure stuff, gonna get it done.
And with a little bit of YouTube magic, I turned off <laughs> the weather. It just got a little extreme. Uh, as much as I like the the uh, the Hawaii Miami-ness of what was happening, uh, it makes it difficult to see, particularly when I'm doing stuff like these roads. So I do really like this park though. I think that this one turned out a lot better than our last one. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. Yeah, this is significantly better. Not really much I need to do to make this work. It is beautiful in my mind. If anyone has said that a park low is beautiful, it is me. <laughs> so, all right. So I want to keep keep this going. So this is interesting because we're kind of coming full circle with uh, River Road at this point. The only regret I have right now is by using these highway roads... I lost a valuable pedestrian facility uh, or pedestrian route. I don't know that it's a valuable pedestrian facility, but it could be one and it's not right now. So I guess uh, that's, that's the world that we're going to live in. <laughs> okay. So this is without a doubt the fastest route to downtown from this area out outside of the, the highway and that's that's what I wanted to provide there was no real good route otherwise to get from this industrial park which is our only district that's producing just general industrial products this is the only district that's doing it and there's no way to get to our, our shops in our downtown area so in my mind that's kind of a problem so we have remedied that so we now need a new residential neighborhood so I want to survey the topography in this area what I notice immediately is that there's about a 10 meter difference in height from this hill and what's happening down here. So uh, this is not going to be a gridded neighborhood. So uh, fans of non-gridded areas rejoice. Uh, and this is also, like I mentioned, not going to be a very wealthy area. So those are just things to keep in mind, I guess, as I'm building this. So I am going to completely respect the topography in this area. So this entire neighborhood is going to be very suburban in character. What I think is we're going to have a collector, a two lane collector that meets up somewhere in this area. Maybe even just kind of comes around here in the one place in between all of these grades and branches off. So what I'm thinking is we could, I, because I don't want this to become a really wealthy area, I want to have some parks, but I don't want them to be super improved. So I'm going to probably make my own park near the highway and kind of let that be a, kind of a neighborhood type park that people here would care about, but I don't think it's a place that anyone would want, would want to visit. And that suits these people in this neighborhood well anyway, most likely. So we'll have this road coming up here. And I'll have a road that just kind of stops over here. People can use that for parking uh, when they're coming to this park space. It's not really going anywhere. Now I also need another road. I don't want to leave this completely empty. I'm going to do something I hate and I'm going to call the sack. Now, cul de sacking makes sense where uh, to, there's really nothing else that you can do due to topography or other unique factors of, a, of an area. Very few places honestly need it. And even here, I'm stretching it. But I'm going to do it because I know that some people like it. And I do think it is important to have a variety of housing options available. Okay, that's insane. <laughs> I made a monster cul-de-sac inside of the topography viewer. I need to just relax and make something smaller. All right, so we've got that there. I think we might throw in a couple more. So 
So not only is this a cul-de-sac road, but it has cul-de-sacs coming off from it, and it looks insane. But I bet you someone would want to live there. I, it's not me. <laughs> so I do want to also create another development at the bottom of the hill. And here maybe I'll do something a little bit more traditional. Well, not traditional, we're just gonna have a straight line basically and meet up on the other side of this road so that there's a parallel way out, uh, the other side of this neighborhood on the hill so there's a parallel way, or another, not a parallel, ugh, another way out. Uh, the last thing we want is this gigantic neighborhood on a hill to end up being a cul-de-sac. And you could do something over here to try to use up more of this land, maybe like an eyebrow or something. I don't love these either, but that doesn't mean that other people don't. <laughs> uh, so sometimes you'll see stuff like that and then you can have some trees or something in this area. And then through here, I think I want to have some connectivity with these roads, but I don't want it to be anything all that easy to navigate <laughs> it's very uh, very suburban yeah and that's I think that's good enough we're gonna fill in landscaping in this area and I, I kid about suburban environments I know they're it's just different strokes for different folks the area that I live in is you know um, fairly uh, it's walkable it's it's a new urbanist area uh but you know uh, it's it's uh i wouldn't i wouldn't say that it's the most uh elaborate place in the world so here we are we've got this neighborhood we're getting going now i want to delineate that park space let's shoot it's so small that i'm struggling with this a bit so I think we're going to have a trail network all the way through here. We'll have connections on either side of the neighborhood. And I kind of want to plan the neighborhood around this because this is going to be it in terms of parks. Uh, we're also going to have a little bit of commercial along this road so that people can walk to the grocery store or at least make a trip on the way home. Everyone is going to be coming in here. Now that I look, I have made a gigantic cul-de-sac. I am disgusted with myself. <laughs> this This needs to be fixed. That's not acceptable so we'll make another connection here I don't love it but we have to have two ways in and out for public safety that's not gonna work otherwise uh, so this let's, let's uh, convert all these roads quickly we are obviously not gonna have dirt roads through this neighborhood I also don't think we're gonna have tree-lined streets I'm gonna keep it very bare bones very functional and very desirable for a certain set of the, of the population, particularly those that want to go and work in that industrial area. Okay, so let's get our park space set up. We're not going to do anything with uh, money. We're not gonna do anything with uh, no elaborate gates. We'll have one main gate, small main gate, We'll have one small side gate over here. No fencing. Pretty bare bones path and it's just gonna kind of mirror this network that we see in here. The roadway network. And it's really kind of a recreational facility. Maybe we'll put one playground in. Uh, but it's a, it's a place where someone could walk, get some exercise, and it's a buffer from the highway because sound walls are expensive. So, this will be our solution. And also, because this park has no fees, I'm not going to be overly concerned about inadvertently letting people walk through this park. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to look at that as a highly desirable thing. So one nice thing you can do with a cul-de-sac is make targeted connections from the bulbs to different sorts of pedestrian amenities and still allow that connectivity to occur. Only we'll to make some improvements here. 
Okay, so now people can at least walk from these bulbs. I think we're gonna make some more connections like that over here as well. Having those pedestrian connections is really important in these areas that are not well connected. Uh, trying to retrofit these in after the fact is next to impossible. Imagine trying to convince someone, hey, Dad, there's gonna be no problem having that pedestrian path in your backyard. You're gonna love it. It's, they're never gonna go for that, not in a million years. The only way that you're gonna get that is by at time of platting, requesting it and getting it then because it's it's one thing to buy a house and see that there's a pedestrian path there and just know that it's a thing and it's another, a, a, a far different thing to move in and have that path put in there. Uh, people just, that causes people to sell their homes which as a planner shouldn't be your reason for existing <laughs> to torment the neighborhood into selling their homes okay so this is good here i think the topography is gonna gonna make it challenging for me to get a connection up this hill but i'm gonna try that's good enough that's it's pretty steep okay it's not good enough because there's no connection at the bottom so that would be a problem so we'll need to we'll need to put that in place but you see that I've taken these park pads and I've just kind of made it a uh, kind of something that the neighborhood is known for. And then in terms of what I'm going to put at the park, I mean, there's not really anything you'd want to see. I think I will put a gazebo uh, so someone could have a picnic. And then over here, one climbing frame so that kids have a place to play and look at cars on the on the interstate, maybe smokestacks across it. <laughs> we'll just pretend that doesn't exist. <laughs> All right, so we've got this in place. All that's needed now is zoning and water and power. So, so basically everything still, but we're making progress. So I'll take that as a win. So reasonably, a neighborhood like this that's far removed and across an interstate that's likely sunken into the ground, there's a decent chance this has its own water tower and is on its own system. And maybe that system would serve this entire area on this side of the highway. Clearly, that doesn't make a lot of sense to do in the game. So I'm going to simply extend water over here, bring it up the highway, pretend that the bridge doesn't matter, send it right underneath the bridge into this neighborhood, and then loop it across the other highway. So I need a whole bunch of roadway names. I'm gonna have to go through my roadway naming list. That might be a B episode coming up soon, roadway naming because I'm getting behind. Um, and I know that after this episode, I'm not done with residential development. I think that we need a ton. So I think that we're gonna start laying out the neighborhoods near the university athletics, athletics complex and uh, starting to infill near uh, the, the Lewis Garden City because there's a lot of land that we could develop in this area for a variety of uses. So that's, I guess, that's, that's, a, that's coming soon. So we are putting the water pipes under the road where they belong, but I did take some liberties like I mentioned. nice and looped we're good we are good so now we can start zoning so I'm excited to do this uh, along these what will be collectors I want some commercial zones there's co commercial zoning might even do a node in this area as well don't want it to be that large though keep that a little bit smaller and now I want to be very purposeful with my zoning in this area so bear with me as I go through and zone now I'm thinking about it before I get ahead of myself I really need some city services in this area so I am going to I'm gonna make a lot of people happy 
or at least one person, Doc, uh, we are going to put in a post office in this area. Let me find that. Okay, so we've got our post office, and this is in the transportation menu, and I just never think of it as a transportation service. It kind of bugs me that that's where they put it, but it is where it is, so we'll take care of that. We also are going to need some fire coverage over here, and some police coverage, and we'll clearly need at least one elementary school. I think we're going to put that right here. We'll have a, some woods behind it. Uh, we're going to need a high school as well. Well, no, they're going to get bust. That's going to be unfortunate for this neighborhood. But there's just not a demand for high schools. Even this elementary school, you know, they would probably get bust over here as much as that would stink for those uh, students. But that's probably what would happen. Okay, so I think we can keep going now do want to clean up some of these grading issues I'm creating. Okay, now basically everything else through here is going to be residential. And we will utilize a landscape buffer along the highway, so I do want to make sure that I leave myself enough room for said buffer. And we're going to need to make a power connection across the highway. No way this would reach otherwise. And now, let's let this go for a little bit and see what happens. So this is a bit of a slow going slog and that's because there's no power. So let's add what I hate to do, add a temporary power line through here and watch everything get connected and hopefully that fixes some things. So another thing I want to think about, so I did miss a couple of the junctions through this area. So we will keep this signalized, but this one I think will have a stop sign. And I want to set a policy here in this neighborhood, but I don't have a neighborhood uh, defined yet. So let's make a neighborhood. So I need lots of names So in the comments today. Names for the park, names for this neighborhood, names for roads. I want them. Very excited to get those from you. Okay, and you might have just thought I was being a little OCD with the, the neighborhood district. I was actually thinking about this neighborhood, and I actually think I'm going to name it after Myrtle. And the reason why I'm thinking of naming this after Myrtle is this is the first episode in a long time we haven't had a fire, so I think we've appeased Myrtle because I am certain that Myrtle is the reason why we've had these fires. We appeased her with Myrtle Avenue. Oh no. No. Thunderstorm. Look at, as I name it Myrtle Park, she says, gotcha. <laughs> you renamed this neighborhood and now look what we're doing. We're gonna hit you with a monster thunderstorm. Great. <laughs> All right, well, that is what it is. We will deal with that. So we still have not enough workers, which is interesting to me. So part of this might be, like I said, we have this policy. We are, oh, there it is. Wow. Well, that is some lightning. I haven't had one of these happen. So it uh, is a scary day here in Verde Beach. Why is that power line there? Oh. Hmm. 
Well, we've got a problem all over the place. And it looks like the problem is that this power line got destroyed. So we'll fix that because it took power out to half of Verde Beach. <laughs> so I think we're good now. Oh, this... Whoa, that's on fire. What is going on with the power? I just... I... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, our availability is still good, but... Half the city just, like, randomly doesn't have power. I'm going to speed this up for a second to see if that fixes it. Nope. Oh, it... it no. I can't... Oh, now our... Consumption's low. Oh, we got a power line going out here. It's getting struck. We've got fires. Oh, boy. So can I fix this? It looks like it's just toast. Maybe I'll just go across the highway here now. Uh, when I initially built that power line, there was really nothing over here, but now I have a quick connection and I can get rid of this longer power line. So in the long run, gotcha, Mother Nature. This will serve us well. Okay, so we've got fires all over the place. We've got our electricity figured out. Wow. So we don't just have fires. We have fires literally everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. The Hamilton experience. It's it's uh it's a fiery experience. It's lit. It's wow. Well, I kind of want to pour one out for the Hamilton experience. <laughs> it's uh not good. What is this person? I saw yeah. There's a lady. She's just she was she was here. Now she's not. They're just casually walking through. And check it out. Yep, check out this. Uh, admire the bench. Were you looking at your phone? Oh, you're, t you're checking out what you should be visiting. You should be leaving. This whole place is a massive inferno. Okay, well, so we're going to have some work to do to get this back in line. Wow, fire, 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 fire. Oh my goodness. Zoo's on fire. Every place is on fire all at once. Wow. <sighs> I'm pretty sure this is... <laughs> this is literally every fire that we've ever had happening concurrently. <laughs> and our new neighborhood's burning down. I... I don't know what to say. Well, I do know one thing. We were going to enter the landscaping simulator and put lots of landscaping around here. This seems like a fairly inappropriate time to even contemplate that. So maybe we're just going to leave this neighborhood fairly uh, barren and uh, worry about putting out fires. Thankfully, it looks like, well, no, I thought this was out. It is absolutely still going. Thank you for doing your job, putting that fire out. But seriously, let's hand it to, to Verde Beach Fire Department. Uh, I mean, I, I already respect the heck out of, out of firefighters. It's, it's a tough job. It's not one that I would personally want to do. You're putting your life in the lines every time. You're putting your life on the line every time you go to work. And uh, the really, it's really a selfless job. But in Verde Beach, it's next level. Because we have the university burning down you know, every other year at this point. <laughs> This nature reserve is just, this is what I get. I told you I turned off, I turned off the rain. And uh, no, no, you gotta leave. Oh, that's so sad. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of elderly people over here sinking into the ground, waiting to be saved. They look like they're hugging, but they're actually just both. Maybe they are? No, they're just hanging out. <laughs> okay, well, 
hopefully the fire gets put out or it just burns out because wait they're going back to their tents they are crazy okay well i need to start fixing some of this stuff because that's where we're at hopefully the disaster response unit can can, can handle this looks like they're doing okay so far And people don't seem to mind. <laughs> They're just climbing on the rubble pile, going to work. It's fine. The Hamilton experience is that great of an experience that even if you had to crawl through the charred remains of uh, the teacup ride, you're going to do it. The view's that good. <laughs> and I guess at this point, everything is so messed up and in this city with fires what else are you gonna do you might as well go and uh experience the hamilton experience at least the resort didn't burn down that's something oh, so i thought the university was done the poor pandas now the pandas oh everywhere all right, so I don't see many places that are destroyed outside of the Hamilton experience. And thankfully, this area didn't have problems. So back to what I was doing, I wanted to look at our policies. So first of all, I should have probably changed the theme. It would have been neat to have the, yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. It's gonna destroy all the homes. It's okay. Everything's destroyed right now anyway. And you know what? Maybe it'll save them from the fire at the school. Um, what I want to do is I want to make sure that people in this neighborhood prefer working blue collar jobs over getting an education. We don't have any other neighborhoods like that in the city. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is institute the schools out policy. And that will ensure that these folks have a good opportunity of working over in this district. So we do have our helicopter depot over here. I'm hoping that at some point they come over and help because we need the help. Let's speed things up because I want these fires to burn out. I want this neighborhood to develop and I want to clean up the city. Okay, so I at least got some power to this area. We're going to let this go for now and let this do this burning thing right at least our pandas are safe our university survived uh, not so lucky here all those people who went back to their campsites I hate to say it probably not the best idea or maybe it was fine actually they're just having a good time in the charred out campground Now we can rebuild the entirety of the Hamilton experience. So one thunderstorm, a severe thunderstorm, don't get me wrong, but one thunderstorm is all it takes to take this city out. No, oh, man, I hope we never had a tsunami. <laughs> I, uh, I fear what that will do to this city. But... Verde Beach is resilient. We're good. We're very good. Our new neighborhood's not so good, but everything else is fine. Everything is awesome. We're fine. Just a quick survey. I don't see any more issues. I don't even really see any more fires. Oh, kidding. There are more fires, but they're okay fires. That's where we want the fires. If they're going to be anywhere, they should be on the hillside not in the city i remember when i was living in la uh seeing the, the fires on on hillsides uh, and particularly where it's not a populated area if you're gonna have a fire that's where you want them uh you don't you certainly don't want them in a populated area like we've had them over here so i am gonna just sneak some temporary lines through here because i really don't like what's happening with the lack of power I will remove this line at some point. I don't I don't like this one at all. Except I probably will remove this one. I guess I'll put it that way. Okay, and 
At this point, I kind of want to look at our transportation network. Our traffic flow is really good. 86, 85. These uh, aren't great. Let's take a look at one thing. So we got distracted with all that. I did want to go through and put stops on these junctions because we want to prioritize this through movement, not the movement from the from the uh, the park low into the arterial. So we've got that now. We're good. Backs things up, but that's you should be stopping there even if it does back up a little bit. Worst case scenario, I can convert this and add on a dual turn line. I might do that. This is busy. Because this is messing up my zoning though, I am going to put a fence here. All right, good enough as far as that goes. Kind of an ugly fence, but okay. We've also got this going the wrong way, so let's get that fixed. Much better. Now you can take a left-hand turn out of there. Unimpeded. Let's see if it changes anything. I don't think it's going to. It looks like almost everyone's taking. Now there's some lefts. It's probably a good thing. Okay, so we're in a good spot, or we're in a spot. We still haven't resolved this though, so that's frustrating. Uh, one thing we don't really have in this area is any density. Again, we're, we're, we're seeing absolutely no demand for residential. I might take a little bit of this land that's undeveloped, maybe even some that's developed, and get it converted over to commercial uses. So a little bit more commercial now, hopefully hopefully trying to, to balance things out so that we can actually get some of this residential growth that we need because we simply don't have enough people to support the industry that we have. So it's kind of a problem at this point. And this might not be remedied until kids make their way through the entire educational system. We probably should have some density somewhere in this neighborhood too, truthfully. We're going to uh, rezone that right off the bat. Questioning a couple of my zoning decisions and deciding to fix them. So we've got some apartments here now, kind of on this main drag. Now that doesn't help our situation as far as the... Uh, um, it doesn't help our situation as far as uh, workers because now these demand more workers but these commercial buildings but we need to meet that commercial demand it's clearly underserved so what i think i might do is add a small commercial district over here and see if that helps at all it would make some sense to me you'd want to have some sort of commercial district in this area or not not that you'd necessarily want it but it wouldn't be the I mean, the, the uses aren't incompatible i guess i'll put it that way um you could certainly see, you could certainly see these kinds of uses existing in an area and and complementing each other well and they frequently do i mean you're gonna, you're gonna have commercial uses near industrial areas it's just gonna be a different kind of commercial than you might otherwise anticipate if it weren't in an industrial area like this clearly wouldn't be a shopping mall or something like that but but look at that it immediately fills in so i would expect this to be really small scale service oriented uh, commercial that you know you wouldn't necessarily drive to it they might drive to you I think I just might finish off the commercial zoning in this area. At this point, there's not a lot else that would be suitable here besides that. So 
I don't think it's the worst land use to have in this area. And you often end up in areas like this. You know, I, I know that I've had conversations at work where people say, well, we don't want this to here. We don't want that there. We don't want this here. So what do we want here? Because at a certain point, you end up with these areas that are so strange that you just, no land uses seem to fit. And I think that's kind of where we're at with some of this land here. It's industrial or it's commercial and it's not great, but it's, it's going to work. Now we should look at our water. We're good, except for in this area, there's one little spot that could use a line. So I kind of want to look at the city, uh, city statistics and see where we're at. So our population's kind of been maintaining. We just had a monster fire. I guess that's not surprising. Uh, let's take a look at our unemployment. Yeah, we're at such high employment. It's no surprise. Our birth rate is kind of steady. Death rate. Well, it's kind of steady. And so many jobs available. Uh, bummer. Yeah, we're, we're, we're at a tough spot in terms of uh, our demand for residential not really lining up with our jobs. So I think part of this might just be a waiting game at this point to put down some of this commercial need and wait for this area to completely build out because at this point, We've done all that we can for this area short of giving up on low, educa uh, low, low, uh, low educated employees generally and implementing the Industry 4.0 policy. Let's see what other policies we have in this area. So first of all, this doesn't cover the entire industrial area, but most of it. Um, So Industry 4.0 would probably make a lot of sense. That said, it does seem like things are improving a little bit, maybe. It's it's really hard to tell. I am going to let this just sim for a couple minutes and see if we get this filled in. Okay, so things are kind of improving, but now we have new issues, not enough educated workers. So ultimately we just, we need more population in general. So this is gonna be part one of this because we're not done yet. We need to fix this, but look at what our population meter has done. It shot through the roof. So we will, be happy with what we have accomplished today. We've developed Myrtle Park. We have survived a natural disaster. And uh, we're surviving the death of our business park, apparently. <laughs> um, one last thing I do want to do. I'm kind of curious about how this is going to work. Before we end this, I want to put together a pedestrian overpass and see if that helps at all. Okay, so nothing fancy here, but it does provide a direct connection between this residential neighborhood and this industrial neighborhood. And I wonder if it's going to get used. Oh, look at that. Look at all those people taking the park 
to cross the freeway and walk over to this industrial district. That is a thing of beauty. That is really a thing of beauty. Maybe that tamps down some of this, some of these issues that we're seeing. Okay, so I thought that, thought that maybe this pedestrian bridge would help. It's certainly helping. It's probably helping with traffic more than anything else, but it is certainly, it seems as though things are improving over here a little bit. Ultimately, we just don't have enough population and we need to fix that before anything over here is gonna get better. So I think we're gonna end it right here, but I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. We have done quite a bit. We made a couple of park lows. We've made this new arterial. Let's take one more look at the what's happening in that network. Not a lot at this end, some though, but it's really relieving a lot of pressure over here. Very, very heavily utilized. And we're, we're starting to fill in on a kind of much neglected part of Verde Beach. So uh, to that end, I'm happy. So. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to be notified when I release new videos, hit that notification bell. Now, I really want to give a huge thank you to all of my, uh, uh, my, my Patreon supporters. Their names are listed here. And uh, I'm, I am going to leave you with a city tour. I hope that you enjoy it. Bye-bye.